Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Uh, I get questions all the time on this channel about which is the best lightsaber soundboard. Uh, I've tried to answer this in the past in recent videos, uh, but some people either haven't seen those videos, they don't understand the lingo, or they're new to the channel. So in that case, I decided to make this video in order to help and guide you. Don't forget if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel uh, and like the video if you like the content. At the time of filming this video, we are extremely, extremely close to 2,000 subscribers. Uh, meaning I will be giving away lightsabers. Uh, to get there, we need to reach 2,000 subs on this channel, and we need to reach 1,000 subs on my boy Benji's channel over at Nerve Herder Customs. Right now, he's around 700 subs, so please go do that. I know a lot of you aren't subscribed to his channel, so please go ahead and do that. I'll leave his channel linked in the description of this video. Also, if you go to my channel and there's like a little section that says uh, Other Saber Friends, you can find his channel right there. Just click on that and go sub to Benji. Thank you so much in advance for that. Also, if you haven't already noticed the very obvious difference in camera quality and lighting quality, uh, I set up my streaming gear. So uh, please be sure to go follow me on Twitch. That's right there. Lando Sabres on Twitch, all one word. I'll leave the link in the description below for my Twitch, but you can go find it right there. Uh, I will be doing some gaming streams as well as some lightsaber related content on my Twitch. In addition to doing some maybe some Q&A type stuff on my channel, uh, it may be easier to do it on Twitch because it's live. And you can have that instant personal connection like that. So be sure to go follow my Twitch. In addition, please make sure to go follow my Instagram. You can see right there at Lando.Sabers. Uh, I'm going to be posting some lightsaber related stuff there. So please be sure to go check both of those out. Okay, so now back to the content of this video, why, why I made this video. So please keep in mind, uh, this is not sponsored by any company. Uh, any programmer, any installer, or anybody uh, that I mentioned in this video. It's not sponsored by anyone. Um, so this is all based off of my research and my opinions uh, so that you can make a better informed decision for your next lightsaber purchase. A lot of this research includes info from people who have been in the lightsaber game for like 10 plus years. Um, so I, I trust this 100%. Uh, I'm not saying that you 100% have to agree with everything I say and the way I list things and how I rank things. And um, or my justifications for those rankings, but just know that this is a pretty accurate guide, and I'll try to keep this as objective as I can. Objective, uh, as I do with any top list video. Note that the lowest ranking in the video does not mean that it's bad, but rather that it is the fifth best or the tenth best or whatever. Uh, in this case, there's five, so it is the fifth best. That lower ranking simply means that it's uh, lacking in certain areas that the higher rankings have, or for other reasons, which I'll mention later. Um, keep in mind that although the term is sound board, these boards do more than just play sound. Uh, it also controls the blade effects. So that's a major contributing factor in uh, these rankings. Uh, all of these sound boards support NeoPixel sabers, uh, as well as in-hilt tri type sabers. Um, so you'll see that cool scrolling ignition and retraction effect that a lot of you love. Um, on the blade, so if you buy any NeoPixel Saber that has any of these soundboards installed in it, then you will have that. I know I get that question a lot. The ranking of these boards will be mainly from the consumer or the customer perspective, uh, not an installer perspective. So uh, difficulty of install will not be a uh, deciding factor in any of my rankings. Uh, the majority of my viewers are looking for pre-installed Sabers anyway. So this is basically just ranking boards that are pre-installed although most of them can be custom installed by you or a Sabersmith installer. If you need any more info about these boards or how to install them, uh, many of them have support groups on Facebook uh, that can help you out far more than I can, uh, as I'm not an installer. As always, the R Lightsaber subreddit uh, has a wealth of knowledge about these boards and uh, people that are willing to help you. With all that being said, uh, let's start off this top five list in ascending order, uh, with number one being the best overall and number five being the fifth best. So number five, I'm going to start with Verso, the Verso soundboard. Uh, there are two soundboards on this list that can be considered budget smooth swing soundboards. Uh, there's really three, but the other one that I'll mention later doesn't behave like a budget board at all and is considered budget only in price. Uh, that aside, the Verso is the entry level smooth swing soundboard that is apparently the easiest to install on this entire list. And as such, it also has less features as some of the others, uh, but is great for beginners. It currently supports both in-hilt tri sabers and NeoPixel sabers, and is sold in installed sabers by Corbanth, or maybe by some obscure Etsy or AliExpress seller or eBay or something, if you find any. Uh, and it's sold as just the board itself by Corbanth and by KR Sabers slash Saber Armory. Keep in mind that all of the soundboards on this list, besides number four, 
are installed custom by installers and by Sabersmiths pretty regularly. So if you'd like a custom installed Saber with one of these boards, this applies as well. The Verso also has effects like flash on clash, lockup, blaster deflex, uh, accent swings, blade profiles, and smooth swing, which will be the main focus of all of these soundboards. It goes for about 40 US dollars currently, hence why I label it as a budget soundboard. A lot of these boards go through regular firmware updates that add or fix features, so that's something to watch out for if you're interested in buying a Sabre with one of these boards, or if you're interested in installing one of these boards. All in all, it's a board that has extremely good sound fonts being developed for it by Kyberphonic, who is definitely one of the best font makers out there. And although it's lacking in a few features uh, compared to some of the higher ranking boards on this list, it's showing quite promising potential for the future. So next up is number four, and it is the Diadium 3 soundboard, or Diadem 3, uh, whatever you like to call it. Uh, this board is a little tricky to rank for a few reasons, but I feel that this is a good ranking for it. So let me explain. The Diadium 3 board is only sold by Electrum Sabercrafts. That's it. No one else. So for you to experience this board, you would have to like Electrum's designs and pricing, which luckily are pretty good in my opinion. Because the D3 is sold only by Electrum and isn't sold as a board by itself, only pre-installed in their sabers, there's no real price for it. So I guess if you wanted to see me really put a price to it, it's at least $229 since you'd have to buy it pre-installed in one of their sabers. And all of their sabers have it, uh, starting with their Neophyte at $229. So now here's a, another reason why this board is a little tricky to rank. So Electrum constructs their sabers and their Diadium 3 system with their own speaker system meaning hardware modifications to your Diadium 3 Sabre will be incredibly tough if you plan to like swap out the speaker or something, but I wouldn't recommend that uh, as they sound pretty good anyway. So expanding on what I just mentioned about that sort of system, sometimes you see soundboards mentioned as a core or a heart, and usually what that means is uh, that it's swappable to other hilts, is uh, modular, or is one complete system. So in this case, that seems to mean that the soundboard, chassis, and speaker are all one Diadium 3 Core Saber System, according to their website. So enough of that like wishy-washy stuff, let's talk about functionality, which is what you all want to hear. The Diadium 3 has smooth swing, clash effects, force effects, flicker and unstable effects on the blade, blade profiles and timings, you can have up to 50 sound fonts, and one of the coolest things on this entire list is a Bluetooth app, which was the first of its kind. Their app is called Electrum Unity, and it controls a multitude of things including uh, live sound equalization, bass boosting, volume control, uh, color mixing for the blade, blade animation effects, amongst a multitude of other things. Note that I have heard some customers have had issues with the app, and because I don't have an Electrum Saber, I can't personally speak on how optimized it is, but it is absolutely one of the cooler soundboard features on the market. Um, I will be mentioning another similar version of that tech later on in the video. I have heard that through a bit of effort though, uh, it is possible to convert sound fonts that are optimized for other soundboards to Diadium 3 sound fonts, and uh, Electrum Sabercraft sells Diadium 3 sound fonts on their website. All in all, it's a great board with some exciting features. It's exclusive to a trusted, well-liked company, and it's definitely worth checking out if you are interested. So next up is the Asteria soundboard. This is another soundboard that's exclusive to only one vendor, which is the Pock Store or Ultimate Works. The Asteria has a few versions, as do most soundboards, which is the V1.5, which is what they used from 2017 to 2018 in their Tri-Cree Sabres, and the V2.0 to 2.5, which is what they use in their newer Sabres, including their NeoPixel Sabres. The 2.0 to 2.5, which I'll just call the 2.5 from now on, has Smooth Swing, and the V1.5 did not. 2.5 has Blaster Effects, Lockup, clashes and all the things that you'd expect in comparison to the previous two boards that I've just mentioned minus the Bluetooth functionality that the Diadium 3 has. Like I mentioned with the Diadium 3 however is that sometimes companies label boards as a core or a heart and that is the case here with the Asteria. The Pock Store and Ultimate Works sell some of their sabers with an Asteria heart meaning it's modular and can be taken out and used with their other hilts. Uh, the entire chassis is removable and it fits a few of their designs, including some of the cannon hilts, which is their big sellers. So uh, that's a really cool feature in my opinion. In terms of overall quality, the Asteria is a close third to the top two soundboards, mainly for its lack of certain features, which I'll discuss shortly. Uh, that being said, it's a great board and the box store sells relatively inexpensive sabers. So it's definitely worth a look, especially if you can't afford sabers that are installed with top two soundboards. Uh, with the recent updates and the videos that I've seen, the 2.5 sounds a bit better, in my opinion, compared to the previously listed boards. 
uh, which is fully subjective, remember? Uh, and it's also possible to convert sound fonts from other boards for the Asteria. Now, I've mentioned these next two boards uh, plenty of times on this channel, so this shouldn't be a surprise to any of you who uh, actually keep up with my videos. But uh, this video is sort of meant for beginners or those that are researching these boards for the first time before they buy a Saber or, or have just heard of it and they're like looking it up. Uh, so I feel the need to reiterate certain points again. So these two can be interchanged, one or two, for various reasons, uh, depending on what the user wants, knows how to do, or has the capability to do, and especially the price. So how much money you have to spend on these Sabres. What's your budget? Uh, so I'll mention what that means in just a second. So for now, I'll start with number two. I'm going to go with Crystal Focus 10 or CFX, uh, also known as Crystal Focus X. So CFX just means Crystal Focus 10 X, the Roman numeral. So that's a board developed by Plector Labs. It's available for purchase by itself through the custom Sabre shop if you want to do a custom install or through Plector Labs themselves. Although Plector Labs really only allows bulk orders, so it's really only limited to the custom Sabre Shop for individual projects. Um, the CFX is also available for purchase pre-installed in Sabres from Sabre Trio, Vader's Vault, Genesis Custom Sabres, uh, Corbent does it sometimes, and uh, many custom installers in Sabresmith also use the CFX. Uh, like Benji over at Nerf Herder Customs, he is the ultimate CFX fanboy. Love Benji over there at Nerf Herder Customs. Be sure to go sub to Benji. There's a variety of reasons why people gravitate towards the CFX. Uh, mainly being the combination of overall features and how easy it is to attain and change those features. So I've shown in previous videos how easy it is to literally change one or two numbers and have a totally different, really cool blade effect. And I've also shown how easy it is to add and customize sound fonts on a CFX Sabre. To change blade or sound features, uh, it's really as simple as changing a few numbers in a text editor, uh, saving the changes and entering the micro SD card back into the Sabre, or unplugging the USB cable when you're using RICE, which is the real-time uh, internal configuration editor, uh, which allows you to visually see what you're doing uh, and see, visually see what you're changing on the blade in real time rather than changing it when the blade's off because the SD card is removed or something, like the method that I typically use. In addition, CFX Sabres can hold a lot of sound fonts. I'm talking like 150 sound fonts at a time. Uh, not to mention some of the best font makers out there, Kyberphonic, KSIF, uh, Genesis Custom Sabres, Juan Seth, all these guys, uh, they're out there optimizing their sound fonts, uh, their smooth swing sound fonts for CFX, so you'll likely never get bored of your sound fonts, and there's really something for everyone out there. Uh, these boards swing, and uh, the clash sensitivity is pretty great as default, although you can change a lot of those features manually and very easily. Plector Labs has an extremely extensive manual for the CFX on their website, uh, and I mean extremely extensive which explains exactly what you need to change in the settings to do certain things, and the manual is updated for every stable update release. In previous videos, I've tried to, I've tried to kind of dumb it down a little bit, uh, as it can get pretty tiresome to read through that entire manual, so feel free to check out some of my previous videos about that if you're interested. Also, Benji over at Nerf Herder Customs recently posted a video explaining what some of the other settings do on a CFX, so check that out as well. Like all the other boards on this list, the CFX has clash, lockup, drag effects, stab effects, etc., everything. Uh, however, there's a, quite a bit more customization allowed for all of those features in comparison to the previous boards, especially in the ignitions and retractions and localized lockup. Uh, check out some of my other videos to see some of those effects in action, as well as other recent videos uh, about CFX here on YouTube. The CFX is not open source, meaning that it is updated by Irv Plector when he can, and updates roll out uh, about every few months, typically. With that being said, I promise you'll never be disappointed by the CFX board and its features. The CFX can also be used in the in-hilt tri sabers. However, you lose many of the blade effect capabilities in comparison to NeoPixel while retaining smooth swaying and gaining uh, dueling capability and durability when you pair it with a good chassis and a, a heavy grade blade. The CFX is basically known as the ultimate customer soundboard or the ultimate consumer soundboard for its features and its simplicity in the customization. Uh, there's absolutely zero doubt in my mind that the CFX is easier to use than the number one soundboard on my list. There's no extra software you need for CFX unless you're using Rice, meaning you insert the micro SD card into your computer and edit it from there, or you plug in the Sabre using a USB cable and use Rice. Uh, I love my CFX Sabre from Sabre Trio, and I can honestly say that it's the coolest thing I have ever purchased by far. With all that being said, that is subject to change depending on when I get my LSV2 from Corbanth installed with the number one soundboard on the market, which is the Profi or the Profi, however, however you say that. I'm going to just call it the Profi. 
The Profi Board V2.2 is the ultimate lightsaber soundboard and controller. Uh, the Profi can be found in a multitude of places, however, but be extremely careful if you're planning a personal install. Uh, there are some Profi sellers out there that are not officially recommended or partnered with uh, Frederick Hubinet, who created the board, and I cannot verify or confirm how the board is set up or how optimized it is if you plan to buy from one of those non-partnered uh, sellers. Some of the trusted and partnered sellers include uh, Saber Bay, Corbath, Hawk Store, Dark Wolf Sabers, Art Kit or Artie Kit, uh, the Saber Armory, and a few others. Uh, remember, always check to see if it's legit before buying. Profi boards are also pre-installed in Sabers from Corbath, Hawk Store, Dark Wolf, Crimson Dawn, LGT, Saber Studio, and their resellers, amongst others. Uh, the Profi is also wildly popular with custom Saber installers, and it's typically only about 40 to 50 US dollars to buy the board outright. In terms of features, take the CFX and add more to it and you get a Profi. The CFX only has about 15 or so blade effects, um, but because the Profi is an open source board, the amount of effects are basically unlimited. Literally, uh, anyone with Arduino coding knowledge can create new blade effects, which are limited solely to what the LEDs in the blade can do. If you don't have that knowledge, there are lengthy guides out there that can help you set up and change things on the Profi board. There are a few minor downsides to the Profi compared to the CFX, uh, one of those being that every time you make a change to the Profi board, you must flash the board's memory. Uh, for the CFX, you save your changes in the text editor, and you turn the saver on, and uh, I mean, that's it, really. Also, because of that flash memory in the storage solution that Profi uses, that means that they use presets, meaning that each sound font is paired with a certain blade profile, and the Profi can only hold about 25 sound fonts at a time, uh, at maximum. Uh, that may not be a huge issue for some people, because like cycling through a ton of sound fonts can be pretty bothersome, and uh, not to mention sound fonts cost money, and some people may not be willing to buy hundreds of sound fonts, because that'll rack up to be hundreds of dollars. A simple solution to that would be you can make multiple micro SD cards with different fonts using the exact same Profi settings and Profi OS and swap them when you feel like using different fonts that are used on a certain uh, SD card. I've also heard that because of the wiring techniques and the power output of the Profi, uh, it can be louder overall than the CFX, although I can't personally confirm that. Uh, I'm sure there's proof of that, uh, of that out there, but I don't have my Sabre installed with Profi yet, so I can't personally tell you uh, whether or not. Keep in mind, overall sound quality is dependent on a few things. The sound font itself and its mixing by the font maker, the wiring of the saber, the soundboard, obviously, and the speaker. Uh, I'd love to do a video in the future talking about and comparing the best saber speakers, but that isn't something I can do right now on a budget. The Veco speaker, the Wow speaker, the Smuggler's Outpost speakers, those are all very high quality and will give you better sound quality in different uh, dynamic ranges as well as different levels of overall volume and crispness. Someone like Benji at Nerf Herder Customs can explain the differences a bit better than I can since he is uh, an installer and has actually worked with those personally. And he even mentioned a bit about that in his recent video, so definitely go check that out. Profi and CFX's smooth swing is nearly identical, and you likely would not even be able to tell the difference based on the swing sounds alone if you didn't know which one was which. Blade effects such as battle mode and smart lockup and some other stuff that are exclusive to Profi are where you start to see a huge difference in features between the boards. Go check out FET263's YouTube channel and website to see what I'm talking about uh, and support his Profi blade style library, which is definitely the best in the industry in my opinion. So the debate between CFX and Profi lies solely on the user. Um, do you want to forfeit certain features for ease of use with the CFX or you spend uh, a bit of time learning Profi and Arduino coding uh, and how to copy and paste those code lines and all that kind of stuff and get literally the most bang for your buck uh, humanly possible especially considering the profi costs half the price of a cfx and it has more features so that's all for you to decide um, but i know that my choice lies with the profi mainly because of the open source factor and the sheer amount of customization that's possible once you learn all the tricks cfx is much much easier to use and customize so that may be a better option for beginners, um, but feel free to let me know what you think down in the comments. Once I get my uh, Saber installed with Profi, then I'll likely do a comparison video between CFX and Profi uh, that you can actually visually see in person. Uh, there are a few boards that I've left off, such as the Golden Harvest V3, um, that I did not mention due to the fact that it's installed mainly by a company that I don't trust at the moment. Um, that isn't to say that it's a bad soundboard, 
um, but I don't trust the ones that are using it the most, where most of the customers get it from. Uh, some other Sabre companies and, and vendors sell the Golden Harvest V3 um, as the board itself, but I, I, I don't see how you can justify using that board when stuff like the CFX and Profi are in that same kind of budget range. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, the Profi costs about the same as a Golden Harvest, so I don't see why you wouldn't use the Profi. Keep that in mind. I don't trust the company that sells Golden Harvest V3 installed sabers. Um, if you know what I'm talking about, then you know what I'm talking about. So just keep that in mind. So thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, if you enjoyed the content, please leave a like, please subscribe. Remember, we are doing a lightsaber giveaway once we hit 2,000 subs. We are so close. By the time you see this video, we may have already passed that. And if that's the case, know that in the future, we will be doing more giveaways. Um, at certain subscriber milestones and stuff like that. Uh, I'll try to highlight smaller YouTube channels and try to boost their subscribers because I know they deserve it. Uh, a lot of people out here uh, really struggle to get subscribers and an increase in subscribers. I know I did for a while. Uh, I wasn't given any shout outs or anything like that. I worked and worked and I finally it finally worked out. Um, and I'm just, we're just all going up from here and I'd love to give back. So thank you all so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't. If you liked the video, please like the video. And may the force be with you.